Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Just Guy Super Friends deck that's looking to play a whole bunch of cheap Planeswalkers and then turn them all into dragons with Sarkhan's plus one ability to close out the game. So let's take a look at our entire deck list, starting out with two copies of Mox Amber, which in this deck is quite powerful since we've got so many cheap three mana Planeswalkers. Mox Amber can help us ramp into our more expensive Planeswalkers and also maybe keep up our one mana interactive spells that we'll get to in a second. Then we've got four copies of Opt as a cheap cantrip to help us smooth out our draw, also a cheap way to trigger Sahili making a 1-1 artifact token. We also have three copies of Spell Pierce as cheap interaction that can help us deal with opposing Planeswalkers as well in the early turns, and also plays well alongside a card like Mox Amber, since we can play Rowan 3 mana Planeswalker, which are all blue, and then we get to keep up Spell Pierce as well if we've got a Mox Amber in play. And then we also have the full four copies of Shock as a cheap interactive spell, helping us deal with smaller creatures, or maybe finish off opposing planeswalkers. And then we also have one copy of a Lightning Strike to complement our four Shocks as another cheap burn spell. Then we get to our planeswalkers, where we've got the full four copies of Narset, part of Veils, which is our main card draw engine in the deck, allowing us to minus two to look at the top four cards of our library, reveal a non-creature non-land card from among those and put it into our hand. And we don't have any creatures in our deck, so any non-land card is good to go. And Narset also has a very powerful static ability, saying each opponent can draw more than one card each turn, which can shut down opposing blue decks. And then we've got the full four copies of the Fairy Time Raveler, which has a very powerful static ability, saying the opponent can only play at sorcery speed. The plus one ability lets us play our sorceries at instant speed during the opponent's turn. And the minus three lets us return up to one target artifact, creature or enchantment to its owner's hand. And we also get to draw a card. And the relevant thing about Teferi using the minus 3 or Narset using the minus 2 ability twice is that both Planeswalkers still stay in play with one loyalty with some very powerful static abilities, but also the more Planeswalkers we have in play, the more powerful Sarkhan's plus 1 ability will become. And then we also have three copies of Sahili, which can generate 1-1 one, one artifact tokens whenever we cast a non-creature spell. And we can also use the minus 2 ability to turn one of our artifacts into another creature we control, which can also be relevant if we control a dragon token, or maybe Karn Sino versus Karnstruct token. And then we also have three copies of Deafening Clarion as our sweeper of choice, as a great tool against creature decks, dealing three damage to each creature. And then creatures we control can also gain lifelink until end of turn, which can be very relevant if we control Sarkhan, turning all our planeswalkers into life flanking dragons. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Karn Sinoversa, which can provide a bit of Karn advantage with the plus 1 and minus 1 abilities, and the minus 2 provides a powerful construct token that grows the more artifacts we have in play, so synergizes greatly with Sahili. And then at 5 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Sarkhan the Masterless, which is the main win condition in the deck, making a dragon token with the minus 3, and with the plus 1 turning all our planeswalkers into 4-4 four, four rant dragon creatures that also have flying, and the static ability can also protect our planeswalkers if we control a number of dragon tokens. And finally, one copy of Teferi Hero of the Monaria as another powerful card draw engine that can also deal with opposing non-land permanents with the minus 3 ability. Then looking at our mana base, the most important land in our deck by far is going to be the four copies of Interplanar Beacon, which can help us cast our planeswalkers and also gains one life whenever we cast a planeswalker spell, which is very relevant against opposing aggro decks. We also have two copies of Mobilized District that can turn into a 3-3 citizen creature with Vigilance and becomes cheaper to activate the more planeswalkers we control. And then the rest of our mana base is pretty straightforward. We don't have any basic lands, we could get away with playing one basic island if we want to play around Field of Ruin or Assassin's Trophy. Otherwise we've got 12 shock lands, for Hallowed Fountains, for Steam Vents and for Sacred Foundries. And then a few check lands as well that come into play untapped if we control one of our shock lands. One Retreat, three Sulphur Falls and three Glacial Fortress. So that's our deck, we will be playing in a constructed event, so let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, so we're on the draw, got Narset and Sahili, double shock. So pretty awkward with those triple beacons. Also, I've learned it the hard way, with triple beacon you can't actually cast Narset. So this hand is quite awkward, I think we'll go to six. Alright, this is better. And I'll keep a Narset. I'm okay taking two against a tapped uh, blue green land. Don't think our life total is going to be in too much danger, and now we get to keep up shock and spell pierce. Probably not going to need to shock and spell pierce. I'm okay playing the tapped fountain. 
Wall of Mist, alright, so we're playing against the Bant Walls. Well, Shock's not a great removal spell against the Defender deck. Now, I would like to keep up Spell Pierce for a potential high alert from the opponents. That's about the only non-creature spell that we want to be able to counter. If we play Sahili and our opponent plays high alert, then they get to kill Sahili, which would be pretty bad. We could play Narset, so at least we get a bit of value, or we can just keep up Spell Pierce and Shock. Sahili is high risk, high reward, since of course we would like to play Sahili as soon as possible, but we do get punished pretty badly by high alert. I'm gonna go for it. Because if we don't play Sahili now, then she's not gonna do much. Alright, Wall of Runes, so we were spared the high alert. Alright, Sulfur Falls was a good pickup, so now we get to keep up Spell Pierce while playing Narset. At some point we can maybe use Clarion and Shock to clear a 5 toughness creature. And I don't mind Opts. Things are going okay. Opponents seem to be stuck on two mana. We're hitting our land drops, adding more planeswalkers to the board, and now it's Sarkon time. Wow, and we even get to keep up Mox Amber for Spell Pierce and Shock. That's pretty lucky. The fairy can also bounce the enchantment or an Arcadas, so I don't mind taking it here. Take two. Play Sarkon. And I'm just gonna plus. Important thing to keep in mind, if you use Sahili, you don't want to be copying a Planeswalker that's turned into a dragon, because the legendary rule will still apply. And then you'll have to sacrifice either the copy or the actual Planeswalker. But we do have to keep Sahili's minus two in mind as well. Ouch, Growth Spiral denied by Narset. And this should be game over. Alright, so opponent sadly wasn't able to hit their land ropes and they kind of got crushed. Alright, we're on the draw with Opt, Double Teferi, Clarion. Seems okay. Opt can help us find lands. So we're probably up against Monorad. I uh, don't think I want to take two to play my Opt turn one, since we don't have a turn two play anyway. And then next turn we can go Opt ste plus uh, Tap Steam Vent. I guess it's also reasonable to play the Tap Steam Vent in case we draw Shock. We have the option of both Opt and Shock on turn two, but then we could also just play Sulfur Falls. Let's play the Tap, say go. So it could be a Feather deck, maybe. Um, Sahili is not bad. Can make some chum blockers on the ground. What I'm concerned with with Sahili is if her opponent plays Feather itself. She doesn't necessarily interact all that well, but I guess we've got double Teferi to bounce Feather, so we can buy ourselves a bit of time. On the other hand, we also have, like, Karn and Teferi that we want to be playing. So it might be better to just hit our land drops. It's close. Sahili does synergize well with Karn's minus two. I guess Sahili is pretty good if her opponent plays a Gideon at some point, since Teferi can bounce Gideon, but we can chum block all day with Sahili. Could have been greedy to keep the Planeswalker here instead of trying to hit our land drops. But with double Teferi against presumably a creature deck, we're gonna get to draw some cards. Now here it would be tempting to shock, but I would much rather just bounce with Teferi. Opponent might also have a pump spell up, so shocking is probably not gonna work out. And if they have to replay their three mana Krenko, we're not too upset. Alright, perfect. Well, Aurelia's kind of an issue. A 
Although we can just uh, play another Teferi and bounce her. What is going on here? Jeez, Sintergroot with the 1000 bits. <laughs> Let me join in on cheers. Well, thank you so much. So I think the line here is going to be just plus the fairy, play another to fairy bounce, and uh, try and hit our land drop so we can maybe play five mana to fairy to tuck Aurelia or make a dragon with Sarkon. Make sure we keep up red and blue. Alright, so missed our land drop here, that's too bad, but I think we're still in fine shape. Do we want to attack with the servo? It's actually an interesting question. If our opponent plays a 2 2 haste, we might want both servos back. Alright, we'll just replace Aurelia. And go to hope for land here. All right, perfect. So this can plus. And I think I like just the fairy tuck. I don't think our opponent has a shock, so I don't worry about the fairy getting burnt out. And I would like for Aurelia to be gone for a while instead of playing a dragon, which may or may not survive. And then next turn, if all three planeswalkers are still alive, Sarkon's plus one is gonna kill our opponent very quickly. And now I think I'm okay attacking with one token, again keeping two back to block the haster. Although now we don't have shock up to respond to a pump spell. Oh, I guess, yeah, that's true. With the fairy Time Raveler in play, our opponent couldn't even play a pump spell on their 2-2, since they can't play them at instant speed. They would have to play them at sorcery speed. So let's start by plussing. See what's up, beacon, good draw. So we get to make sure we get to kill Cranko. Plus here. So play beacon, play Sarkon. More tokens. And the yeah, opponent's just dead. We could attack for 12 damage. So not quite lethal this turn, but no way our opponent's coming back from that position. So we got lucky to hit our land drops when we did. I'm not sure if keeping Sahili at the end of the day was really worth it, but it's a close decision nonetheless. And also seeing the power of the fairy, just making the opponent waste all their mana, replaying all their threats, which were pretty expensive. And that's also why haste is so important against the Planeswalker decks. If you're just playing a 3 mana sorcery speed creature and the opponent gets to play the fairy bounce, and then the opponent now has a Teferi in play, and you didn't really make any progress. Alright, this one is going to be a Mulligan. This one's a pretty easy keep. And do we want a Mox Amber? Eh, don't think so. If they deal with Time Raveler, then Mox Amber doesn't do anything. And I'll play this Team Vents, so that if we draw an Opt, we can keep up both Opt and Shock and play Tap Sacred Foundry. Narsets. Alright. So we've got some nice turn 3 plays lined up facing Steam Vents into Summit, so Grixis. Grixis can be a difficult matchup since it'll have plenty of Planeswalker removal. There's Opt, so we'll lead with Narset. That way for opponent does have some card draw spells, those will be ineffective until they deal with Narset. If we suspect they have a shock, it could also be correct to keep Narset at 3 loyalty instead of minusing again, but most likely they'll have some Angras Rampage or Bedevil. So this seems like a good opportunity to play Karn. Any reason to minus before playing Karn or afterwards? Any better 4 mana play we could find other than Karn? I don't think so. But I guess we'll try. If we find like a Spell Pierce, we might play differently. Alright, well, how about a backup Narset, or do we take Teferi? Already have Sarkon at 5. Karn is somewhat likely to find us lands for the 5 mana Planeswalkers. So I think I'm leaning Teferi here of Dominaria still. Do 
Do they have a counterspell? They have a head explosion instead. Well, it looks like Narset was pretty effective, maybe. And our opponents saw we had a Teferi and a Sarkon in hand with Karn. So, can't blame them. Alright, well, so far getting some pretty quick wins. Alright, so we might get to see Mobilized District in action this game. Double Sahili's maybe not great, don't have any other Planeswalkers, but I don't think we can mulligan. Just gotta hope we draw into some Planeswalkers, there's a few of them in the deck, as you may have noticed. And probably leading with a tapped Sacred Foundry. Even if we're up against them on a red deck, it's uh, questionable to take two to shock a hasty creature. And we don't have a turn to play lined up, where we would like to shock and then be able to play our two drop onto. Alright, Clarion's a good one, so I think I'm gonna sandbag the shock. Although there is of course a concern of enabling spectacle if the Lava Runner hits us. But generally speaking, I think we wanna hold on to the Clarion. Clarion, also one of those cards that's sometimes better on the draw than on the play, since that allows for the opponent to play an additional creature into it. Well, now I think I'm just shocking if they're not playing an additional creature. And then next turn we get to play Sahili. We do have Spell Pierce, which could come in handy to counter a potential Experimental Frenzy. And our opponent using burn spells that aggressively also kind of indicates that they might have a Frenzy in hand. This trick now costs 3 mana to be activated. Uh, but then we wouldn't have any colored mana up for Spell Pierce, so it's probably not worth it. I will happily activate District to block the Firebrands if they want to use a Lightning Strike on it. I think that's acceptable since we've got another one. And then they're not using Lightning Strike on one of our Planeswalkers. And we don't need the fifth land right now. Alright. Bone forgot to put a stop to Lightning Strike before blockers. So he also prevented one damage. Still wanna make sure we keep up Spell Pierce. Now we could Clarion, or we could Lightning Strike, or we could just do nothing. I think Clarion's okay. Seems bad to use our Clarion for one for one. But Lightning Strike's a bit more versatile, and I doubt he'll play a second creature into the Clarion anyway. Yeah, that's also... Kind of my thought, if we Lightning Strike first, then we get an extra token from a Sahili, but that token's just gonna die to a Clarion. So I think it makes more sense to keep the Spot Removal spell and use the Board Wipe. Alright, looks like Rapun might be respecting Spell Pierce, not playing the Frenzy. Who knows. I will opt Main Phase in the hopes of finding some action. And what do we find? Another Opt. I guess it's an extra token with Sahili, so it doesn't hurt. But we can't cast it right now, because we want to keep up Spell Pierce. It's a bit of a weird position here. Chain Warlord wipes our token. End of turn we can Opt plus Lightning Strike. Probably starting with Opt. And we want a beacon? Not really. It is our second red source for a potential Sarkon, but we don't have a Sarkon in hand. Chain Warlord down. Another spell pierce, so now we can. Uh, Potentially double spell pierce a frenzy if her opponent has enough mana to pay for the first one. But I guess for now we can activate the district. It's gonna be a little awkward if we use 
the auto tapper and it taps out of blue mana. So I'll just do this. And then we could keep the tokens back to play around the haste creature, like another Gee to Lava Runner. But I think we want to apply some pressure here, because her hand's not very good, so I'm not that comfortable playing a longer game. And if they play another Chain Whirler, our tokens would die anyway. They could easily have a second Frenzy. Hopefully Spell Pierce will be able to handle that as well. Could also be minusing Sahili to turn our Servo into a mobilized district. If we spell Pierce here, four, then we might have lethal next turn. Making that play. So animate. Minus. So this becomes this. And then... Can reactivate this. Sweet. All right, so for no so far, not bad. All right, this hand is missing a red mana, but we do have a decent start off spell pierce as interaction, Narset, Sahili. So I think we still keep. If this were a six land hand without Sarkon, it would still be an easy keep. But what two mana play is a red deck gonna play that we need to spell pierce? Not that many. So I think I'm okay playing Sacred Foundry tapped, and then next turn we can play Glacial Fortress. While also having access to potential top deck shock, and there's a shock off the top, perfect. It could be reasonable to not shock the Pyromancer, since we've got Sahili that's going to be producing some 1-1 tokens that can trade off, but then the Pyromancer's going to deal at least 4 more damage, and I don't think we want to make that happen. And then we might as well shock it now, so they don't have access to a cheaper Wizard's Lightning. And I'll keep up Spell Pierce, that's probably worth it here. Let's spell Pierce that one. And Beacon was definitely a good pickup. So I'll start with Sahili. Start making those 1-1s. One Next turn, Narset. If we play Narset, we'll have to decide if we want to have the possibility of keeping up Shock by playing Glacial Fortress, keeping up Sacred Foundry. Or if we just want to play Narset first. So I think I'm just going to run out Narset and then hope that we don't find a shock. Alright, Clarion could be good, probably better than Lightning Strike. Discourage them from playing more creatures. Although next turn we might just run out a 5 mana Sarkon anyway. We'll see. The lifelink on Clarion could also come in handy if we turn Planeswalkers into Dragons. It's just going to be a Wizard Lining. Taking out Narset. And we're actually in pretty good shape here. Sarkon make a dragon. It's the only card we're concerned about here is an Experimental Frenzy. That could potentially take over the late game if they manage to deal with both Sarkons. Pyromancer takes out Sarkon. And a Wizard's Lining plus Firebrand to kill the dragon, all right. Well, at least we're getting through all those burn spells. And we're still at 18 life, so that's the good news here. 
Do we want to opt main phase? I think we want to probably represent having a spell pierce, make it more complicated for the opponent to navigate their turn. But I will keep up Sulfur Falls here, since I want to keep up both blue and red mana so we can represent Shock. And since I don't think there's many plays we would want to make over Sarkon, I think playing Sarkon before playing Opt makes sense. Since I don't think there's any other plays in the deck that we would want to make instead. So hopefully this Sarkon gets to stick around. Opponent already used quite a few burn spells here. But they'll probably have some more in hand. It's gonna be Firebrand. So... They might be considering the implications of a uh, spell pierce. I think I'm still playing the opt, even though if they, let's say, have a shock, they could now feel free to shock Sarkon. I don't know, I think I'm still gonna go for it. Also, if we were to Deafening Clarion, they could shock the dragon and kill it. So if they shock Sarkon, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Now the issue here is if we Deafening Clarion, they can use Firebrand to finish off the dragon. So I think what I'm gonna do is shock the Firebrand and then see what they do. So yeah, we'll start by shocking the Firebrand. And if they don't shock our Dragon, then we can run the Clarion play. And they shock Sarkon, but he is not a creature yet, so now if you turn Sarkon into a Dragon, uh, the 3 damage is not gonna kill him. And we get to keep up Spell Pierce. So both modes. And gain 8 against... Mo oh! Did I mess up? I thought Sarkhan would survive. That shouldn't happen. Well, that could easily cost us the game. Luckily we had Spell Pierce for Chandra. Do we want to cash in Teferi right away? Kinda wanna draw more action. That's a miss, but at least we found an Arset, which is good. Chain Whirler was good. Finishes off the ferry. And do we cash in Narset or Opt first? Probably cash in Narset. So I think I'll take Karn. And then... Keep up those colors of mana, seems good. Plus... Get a Hallowed Fountain. And there's no two mana plays we are looking for. So I think we can play the Stapped and then opt end of turn. Now do we attack with the dragon? Keeping the dragon back in the face of a first ranking chain whirler isn't the best and our opponent is a 12, so I think we attack. And if they want to spend their turn attacking Karn, that's fine. They might have a burn spell to finish him off. No need to opt right now. Wait until we have the most amount of information. Beacon can go to the bottom. And a backup to ferry. And another to ferry. Alright, and let us plus. I'm fine with either one. If they give us Narset, that's definitely a sign that they're holding a frenzy. Alright. So they probably don't have a frenzy or they're hoping for land first. They'll play a big to ferry. Opts. And do we need to opt main phase? Don't think so. Let's attack. And 
and say go. Well, imagine this game if we still had a Sarkhan in play. Would have ended quite a while ago. But we still got there. Sweet. Alright, 5-0, let's keep it up. Seems like a keeper. Pretty good against any creature deck with lots of interaction. Not amazing against a more non-creature heavy deck. That's gonna get shocked. Sultai and a Wild Growth Walker. Well, the fairy lines up pretty well against Wild Growth Walker, at least. So probably gonna shock the Branch Walker, opt and then Teferi bounce Wild Growth Walker. Set them back a bit. Um, I already have two Teferis. I think I would rather find a different Planeswalker. Filthy with the giant raid. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Playing some Just Guy Planeswalkers in a constructed event. Currently 5-0. So things are going pretty well. Put on replace Walker. Branch Walker. That's fine. Fraska's pretty good against us, can deal with all the three mana planeswalkers. Start by plussing. Here we go. I think I like Karn plus here. And then see what happens. Since we also kind of wanted to hit our land drops. And Karn Sinoversa is good at providing land drops. We would like to get to 6 mana where we can maybe double spell Clarion killing Branch Walker and then Teferi bouncing Wild Growth Walker, but not sure if we can set that up here. Alright, Fraska just minuses on Teferi, that's good. Means that Fraska won't be able to minus this turn. Uh, nothing we want to get back with Karn, so we'll plus. Alright, Sarkhan's a good one. So is there any way we can keep Karn alive here to get Sarkhan? I guess not, but we've got a second Karn which can get back Sarkhan from Exile, since it doesn't care where the Exiled card came from. I guess I would much rather bounce the Wild Growth Walker than the Branch Walker. So it could be a good turn to just Clarion the Branch Walker and then leave them with a Wild Growth Walker that we can maybe bounce with the Fairy next turn. Seems okay. And we want to keep up Steam Vents if we can to represent both Spell Pierce and Shock. I think we figured it out. And then play a Tapped Fountain. Alright, so Karn will die, Frasca will be at 3. The fairy bounces Wild Growth Walker, so we still don't have a great solution for Vraska. But maybe a hasty Planeswalker can get the job done. Tamiya's pretty good too here. Let's see if they start plussing. So this would have been a good spot for a Spell Pierce. And the last card's a land. So it's gonna be a close game. Could go either way. Shock, not quite enough to kill any of the Planeswalkers, but seems like a good turn for Teferi plus Narset, and if they want to kill Narset they'll have to get rid of Raska. 
which they of course can get back with Taimyo, but that's fine. We'll start by Teferi bouncing, since that's something we'll have to do anyway. Sulfur Falls and play Narset. And I guess we'll go with the Teferi here. So we've got plenty of Planeswalkers to work with, still a Sarkon in Exile that we can get back with Karn. We would like to be able to play Sarkon and then just make some hasty Planeswalkers to finish off the opponent's Planeswalkers. Don't know if we'll be able to set that up here. Trophy can deal with any of our 5 mana walkers. They will just cash in Vraska. Alright, so that's one fewer Planeswalker we have to deal with. Start by plussing. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. How much mana can we have here? Seven. Could just Karn and get Sarkon. And then try and protect Karn as much as possible. Yeah, I think I like Karn minus. Make sure we get our Sarkon back. And play the tapped. And is there any reason to shock the Branch Walker right now? Don't think so. Can just wait. They could, of course, get back another Explore creature here. And grow the Wild Growth Walker, but then Karn would still survive. Opponent's still looking for that Jade Light. Hasn't found one yet. So Wild Growth is probably going after Teferi. So the trophy in hand means we don't get to kill Tamyo with Sarkon plussing. But then they would have to point the trophy at Karn. They'll main phase it. They probably should have considered waiting until uh, draw step in case we drew the basic for the turn. Apparently we're not playing any basics. I thought we had one island in the deck, but I guess not. So we're still in an okay spot here. We could Teferi minus on Tamiyo, but then a Wild Growth Walker gets to finish off Teferi. Could make a dragon. Tamiyo could minus and get back trophy at any point. We could just Narsa, see what we find first. Maybe that's a good place to start since we'll still have mana to play one of our five mana walkers. All right, Clarion, back up Sarkon. Guess I'll go with Sarkon. And then we'll play Sarkon, make a dragon, I think. Would also be reasonable to just the fairy talk Tamio. And then Wild Growth finishes off to Fairy, but we get to pull ahead with Narset and Sarkons. Alright, they are playing Command as well. Didn't know that for sure yet, but I guess the presence of Tamio gave it away. Well, now we're in a great position. Opponent drew a land, didn't get back trophy, they went for the greedy Commanded Redhorde play. Didn't get rewarded. So let's minus. The Fairy seems great. Now, ideally we would find a Spell Pierce to counter command the Dreadhorde. If that's not an option, we just need to try and pressure their life total as much as possible. I guess we start by bouncing the Wild Growth. This isn't a fight you can win. Don't worry, I got it. And then we can still the Fairy plus... And we're looking for spell pierces more than anything. Alright, so want to kill Tamio. Dealing 12 to them doesn't seem quite worth it here. Next turn we can also Clarion 
to gain a ton of life if we wanted to. Alright, so if we can dodge a Commander Dreadhorde here, we're in great shape. Just a Wild Growth replayed. Did they finally find the Jade Light Ranger? They did, that's fine. Uh, we could shock the Jade Light with the Explore Triggers on the stack, but since we've got a Clarion, I don't think that's necessary. And then next turn we can Clarion plus Shock to kill the Wild Growth Walker as well. Alright. I'm still looking for a Spell Pierce. So we'll plus. No time for a break. Lightning Strike plus. Let's try this. Start with Opts. Although, can we burn them out? 27. I guess we're dealing 16, 20, 25. We're a little bit short. But if we find another burn spell, they're dead as well. Why not shock the Jade Light? Because we wanted to clear in here anyway. And then keep the shock for the Wild Growth Walker. And then they'll be at such a low life total that Commander Dreadhorde's not going to be very effective. Yeah, I should have turned my Planeswalkers into creatures first. So if our opponent does go for a Commander Dreadhorde, we can maybe surprise Lightning Strike them in response to the triggers from the Wild Growth Walker. But they didn't get there. So our opponent did run somewhat bad. They didn't find any cards off of Tamiyo's plus one ability. They'd never found their Commander Dreadhorde. So they definitely had a below average hand, I think. But we got there regardless. Alright, let's see if we can win the last one here. Alright, hand seems great. Facing White Weenie. Keep Mox Amber in hand. If we can keep it until we find a Sahili, we can get a bit of value. So we're going to be on the lookout for Deafening Clarion. <laughs> well, ask and you shall receive. There's a chance we need to spell pierce something and we'll use Op to dig for it. We still need to find a white source to cast it, so that's also something we'll be on the lookout for. History. Alright, I think I'm opting a response, because if we do find a Spell Pierce, I might want to counter that in case we fail to draw white mana. Shock instead, I don't think that's good enough. Alright, there we go. I kind of want to wait until next turn to Clarion. Although that might be a little bit greedy if they play Legion's Landing, since that's going to be a difficult card to beat. So we should probably just clear in right now. Still got the Fairy to deal with the follow-up token. Yeah, Loxodon could also punish us. Pun didn't have much to do there. So it seems like a good time for Teferi. Could play the Beacon first or could play a Tapped Sacred Foundry. I think it's probably better to play a Tapped Sacred Foundry. And back up Clarion, not bad. No need to play Mox Amber. So your opponent's hand must be all Loxodons. Banalish Marshal, maybe some Conclave Tribunals. I've got time. Think I like playing Sarkhan. We could also double three drop Narset plus Clarion, which could be reasonable if their hand has a bunch of Loxodons in it. Then we don't want Marshal to go up to four toughness because then it doesn't die to Clarion. So yeah, I guess it's probably the less greedy play to just Clarion right now for the one for one. But we can Narset first, maybe we'll find a Lightning Strike and then we don't need to Clarion. I'll take the Opts. Up. 
And now we can Sark on plus and get in there. Close out the game. And our opponent just scoops it up. Their hand was a bit too clunky. Sweet, so got a clean seven wins. Yeah, we could also clear in at instant speed, that's reasonable. I keep forgetting we have the ferry letting us cast our sorceries at instant speed. The problem with playing Clarent and instant speed still is that we let our opponent use a creature for Convoke. So let's say their hand has Conclave Tribunal. By not Clarioning on our main phase, we let them use the Banalish Marshal for mana. Same with Loxodon. If our opponent, let's say, has a Loxodon in hand, they could play a land, play Loxodon with Convoke. Whereas just killing the Banalish Marshal right away prevents that from happening in the first place. All right, let's claim our prize. So that was Just Guy Super Friends, but for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.